is a quick tutorial on how to do serrations or corrugations, depending on um, who your customer is, what they call them. But that's these little lines that are on your shears and how to put those back on. Now this is a factory, this is some cheap, cheap scissors. Um, but this is a factory serrations. And what I'm going to do will not look as nice as that. I'll just be right up front with you. Um, I'm using these diamond serration files. They're fine tooth, and we get them from Wolf Industries. And this is a new one. This one is an old one. And I don't know if you can see the difference in the video, how this one you can see more of the sparkles and more of the diamonds here, and this one's worn down. So I'm gonna start with the worn one first. So you can see the difference between a fresh file and a worn one. I can go with the scissor here. Um, you're going to have to work your way down the file. You need to start at the back, work your way front, start at the front, work your way back. I do it just by holding my hand. Some people like to have um, some kind of a brace or something to hold it in, a uh, vise. I just do it freehand. Uh, usually prop it on my stomach rather than on the table, but this works. I didn't think you'd want a picture of my stomach. So I'm coming in, and let me show you the angle. I'm not at right angles here. I'm a little bit tilted about here. Can you see that? Not straight on. I'm not all the way the angle of the, of the bevel because that's going to be a lot of work if I try to cut that full bevel. But I'm a little bit here, just tilt, tilted in. So I'm holding my finger. You see I'm, I'm holding it? Holding my finger here. I'm going to start at the back of my file and get it propped, get my right angle. So I'm, see I'm touching my finger here. One, two, three. Did you hear the, it cutting? And I'm hoping you can see this, but I have some little teeth cut in here. It's not beautiful, but it works. I'm going to let you see what it looks like with the fresh better file. I'm going to work my way down, same type of thing, and I try to bring this in where I left off. One, two, that's just catching for some reason. Maybe there's something wrong with them. Defective. Ah! Sometimes these files are defective. Can you see that little knob right in here? Let's see if I can pick that out with something. That's what's catching. And this is kind of good to be aware of that there's defects in files. Don't always think it's you that's making the mistake. Sometimes it's the tool. Hmm. May have to get a new file out of the drawer. Let me try this again. Okay, here, it's a little bit better. It's still catching that same spot right there. So, I found out how to fix this file without having to replace it. I took my old file, the one we, we had seen that was worn out, I laid it on that area of the file that had the defect, defect on it, and I'm slide it up and down trying to keep in the same grooves and that knocked that bad spot off so now it's in great shape again amazing what you can learn by just trying so I'm going to come in here leave where my last um, tooth is work my next section one two three you see how it's working better it's like playing a violin And I'm going right on down the whole blade. And I'm going to go back over my spot that I used with the old file here at the tip that didn't look pretty. And so I have serrations all the way down that blade. They're not as pretty as the factory serrations, but I have them in there. The serrations have also pulled up a little bit of a burr. So what I'm going to do with those 
is I will get a paper towel, cut it off, and I find it's better to cut it off a little section at a time. Some people alternately will pull the blades apart and then open them up, but that's working pretty good like that. Um, if you feel any extra burrs in there, you can work on it, but that gives me that little rhythmic whisper. And let's see how they cut now. And remember, these are cheap scissors, so don't expect them to cut like a top end shear. But you see how it's cutting nice and precise? And that's how I put a serration on. Now there's other alternates. Let's say you don't have any of these serration files. You can just sharpen that side with a very coarse grit. Um, something like, I, I think I've got an 800 grit on here, maybe a 500 or 600 grit, and just leave that side alone where it's a, um, has a little toothiness to it. And that, you can tell your customers, is a graduated serration or graduated corrugation. That was actually one of our ideas at the Sharpener's Jam one day. And um, tell them they're not going to see the lines, but it's like no line bifocals. So that's one of your choices. Uh, another choice is if it's a hair salon, I'll talk to them about taking the serration off and then I can actually change the angle, make it a little bit sharper, a little bit smoother. And in most of the cases with stylus, they'll prefer the serration gone. It's gonna be mostly your barbers and your dog groomers that want the serration. And how much do you charge to put serrations on? It's hard to get very much money for doing this because usually it's the cheap scissors like this that have serration. These are the cheap scissors like this are the ones that need serration because the metal's soft and you're not gonna, you know, it's a blunt edge and you don't wanna push the hair. So, um, you know, charge what you can. I usually, if the scissors are already one that is serrated and I'm just having to add the, you know, put the serration back on because someone's messed it up by taking some off, I'll, I won't even charge for it, which probably is wrong, but um, if it's a scissor, normally it's not serrated and I have to put the serration on, I would charge as much as I would normally charge just for sharpening. So if I charge $30 for sharpening, I would charge 60 for sharpening and putting the serration on. And then the next time I sharpen it, I wouldn't um, charge for it. Now, a shear that has a serration on it, usually it's only on one side. And when I get them in to sharpen, I'll sharpen only the non-serrated side, if I can get away with that. And, you know, maybe do something to smooth it inside with a, um, a ceramic stone or something. But I'm not going to go and try to do... Uh, uh, a lot of work on a serrated shear usually and I you know typically I don't see that many because I do mostly high-end beauty shears and you're gonna see most of these on um, dog groomers on groomers and also some of your stylists that are from Europe and Germany they're used to the serrations or that have come from the barbering into the business into the beauty end of the business but that's a uh, the little short and dirty um, technique on putting serrations on your shears.